Our mates over at Zip have just lent us these rather cool bikes so that we can check out their new 303 disc tubeless Firecrest wheels, which are available in a smaller size, 650B. Now, if you are a road rider, you probably haven't ever had to think very much about wheel size before, if at all, because road bikes come with what are called 700C wheels, and that's pretty much that. But increasingly, there is an alternative, this smaller alternative that's called 650B. They're an interesting proposition. They potentially help to improve the design of smaller bikes, but then there's a new crop of bikes that are utilising this size to increase versatility whilst maintaining speed and agility. By pairing smaller rims with bigger tyres, the promise is that they can make drop handlebar bikes more fun. We can't wait to try them out properly. On road, off road, uphill and down and see what all the fuss is about. Well, let's back up a bit before we start talking about fun. Uh, you could be excused for not knowing what on earth we're talking about. So what is it, Si? A 650B wheel has a rim diameter of 584 millimetres. A 700C wheel has a rim diameter of 622 millimetres. Now, the concept behind improving bike design for smaller riders is a simple one. You simply don't have to make sacrifices to the geometry of the bike in order to squeeze those larger wheels underneath the rider. But what about the fun thing then? Fortunately, that too is also a simple concept. By using a smaller diameter 650B rim, you can therefore fit a larger tyre and still keep the overall wheel diameter the same as a standard 700C road wheel. Now that means you can keep the geometry and therefore the handling characteristics the same as a normal road bike, but the added tyre volume means that you are not restricted to riding on the road. Not by a long shot. Or at least that is the theory. Until Zip lent us their brand new 650B 303 Firecrest disc tubeless wheel set, we hadn't had the opportunity to try. So these are tubeless compatible, disc brake specific, and they've got that super aero Firecrest shape. Now, as you can see from the fact that I'm still not particularly dirty just yet, we still haven't really tried them properly. And so we have planned another GCN epic gravel ride. And in the process, we're also going to be ticking off something from our bucket list by riding all the way up there. Dan, are you serious? Yeah. Lord Hereford's Knob? Yes, not for the faint of heart. It's going to be quite long. It's hard as well. Two bikes, two pairs of wheels. So that we can put them in context, we've got one pair of 650B Zip 303s with 47 millimetre wide tyres, and then one pair of 700C 303s with 35 millimetre tyres. Same total wheel diameter, same bikes, same ride? Or same bike, different volume tyre, different ride? Now, if you want to go into the real tech and physics of it all, we'll have a video on the tech channel as well, where we can talk all about angles of attack and tyre rollover. But right here, right now, we are going to try and get a feel for just how it rides. Most epic gravel rides start with at least some riding on tarmac, even if that's just to get you from the coffee shop to where the trails start. And let's be honest, if you're riding a bike with drop handlebars, you're probably going to spend a reasonable amount of time riding on the road, which means that the handling traits of 650B wheels on the road should be an important consideration. And it's weird. Well, it feels like, well, it feels just like a road bike, really. We've got different sized tyres, as you can see, on the different sized wheels. So Continental Cycling Cross Speed on the 700C wheels, they're 35 millimetres wide. And on the smaller wheels, the tyres are 47 millimetres wide. That gives an overall diameter of 680 and 690 millimetres respectively. And that similarity means that the handling traits are almost identical. The only real difference is that the wider tyres obviously have a larger contact patch on the ground. And so as you begin to turn, you can kind of tell. In fact, if you ride along with your eyes shut, you can tell the difference. Mate, don't ride along with your eyes shut. 
Right, we've just done a quick wheel swap so I can get a sense of how these ride before we leave tarmac for good today. Now, we did want to also get a feel for the speed differential between the fatter tyres on the smaller rims and the skinnier tyres on the larger rims as well. We know aerodynamically that there's going to be a disadvantage to the wider tyres. Funnily enough, Zip actually have never thought to test gravel tyres aerodynamically in a wind tunnel before, but they very kindly did a bit of mass on the back of a napkin for us and they've worked out that there's a rough 20 watt penalty for using the fatter tyres at 40k an hour. But the zip rims are nice and wide anyway, so 21 millimetres internally and 29 millimetres externally. So that provides great support for these super wide tyres. And you could be forgiven, to be honest, for not really caring too much about all of this when you are riding on a bike such as this. What then about the rolling resistance? To be perfectly honest, when I was on those, I didn't think you could really feel much of a difference. No, we have tried to do a bit of science here using a gentle gradient and rolling down it. We did measure a slight penalty over the wider tyres, but given that aerodynamics and given the fact there's a different tread pattern, I'm not sure it's going to stand up statistically, Dan. No. Uh, basically then, monster wide tyres like this will slow you down ever so slightly when you are riding on the road. But nevertheless, due to the geometry, it still feels lively and responsive. As accomplished as they are on the road, you're not going to want to use these as your go-to wheels for that purpose alone. No, you're going to want to take them off-road. Yeah, because here they really come into their own. Because if you're using a normal 700c wheel with a cyclocross or a gravel tyre on there, if the trail gets too rocky and too rough, you lose some of the fun factor because the puncture risk goes up, therefore your tyre pressure needs to go up, and that makes things all... Well, a little bit uncomfortable. Well, not to mention sketchy. Not to mention sketchy. But with the 650B wheels, you get to take your nimble, agile road bike off-road with abandon. In these, I'm running just 30 PSI, while Sai has got 45 PSI. That's 50% more. It is. Now, that 650B wheel and tyre combo, therefore, makes things an awful lot smoother. You can hit things harder and faster, and you still have way more control. Or at least you would do if they weren't completely slick down the middle. No, no, that's true. Now there is also one last string to the bow of the 650B wheel, and that is that they're lighter, quite significantly in fact. So the Zip303 650B wheel is just 1,450 grams for the pair, whereas the larger 700C wheel is an extra 195 grams. Now in this case, there is a significant weight penalty with the tyre, so this Continental Cyclocross tyre is actually 170 grams lighter. So although they still come out slightly lighter, with different tyre choices, they could be significantly lighter. Now, that may not matter all that much on the road, but off-road, where your speed is lower and you're also changing speed more frequently, that is a big advantage. Well, here we are. We have made it. Nice one, mate. Yeah, check out the view. That is amazing. I must admit, I'm not sure I've ever seen fog up close quite like this. Really like impressive, before. isn't yeah. it? Really impressive. Uh, anyway, some of you at home might be there quite disconcerted about the fact that we're using these carbon rims off-road. And you might be questioning whether that's sensible or not. However, don't be worried because Zip have informed us that these very rims stand up just as well to that kind of terrain as their mountain bike equivalent. Yeah, on a personal note, uh, these very 700C wheels have been through the mill this season with me. Uh, and the only scars I can find on them down are from the sealant that I haven't cleaned off properly yet. <laughs> oh well, that's not too bad, is it? Right, shall we descend Lord Hereford's knob? Yeah, go steady, mate. I will do. Quite hard. Well, I think it's going to be quite exciting. Probably over far too quickly. Always the way. Okay, we have descended Lord Hereford's knob now, Si, haven't we? And we've gone from the clouds up there back down into the woods. Now, at the start of this video, we made the suggestion that 650B wheels could make drop bar bikes more fun. And completely subjectively, I think we can both say we can see the appeal. Oh yeah. However, is there a way of scientifically measuring the fun? Well, 
we are going to try using some pretty pioneering science involving advanced facial recognition software. We're going to try and quantify smiles. That's right. Now you can probably see the difficulty here, particularly because Dan rarely smiles himself. We're going to have to use some seriously sensitive equipment. But can we effectively measure the size of a grin after this super cool bit of trail? Two, this is not right. It's got my age wrong to start with. Yeah, sorry, Dan, mate. Science appears to have failed us there. Maybe it worked better with Matt. Hmm. Well, that's taken quite a lot of the fun factor out of today, if I'm perfectly honest. 42. <laughs> All right, well, just tell us how they feel then. What uh, are they like? Well, today is kind of reminding me of that first GCN epic gravel ride that we did a couple of years ago where I was insistent on using my normal road bike because I'd been successful on that in the past on gravel. However, it was clear that you didn't puncture like I did and that you had a lot more fun and you were more comfortable off-road. And this is like an extension of that, isn't it? The 650B wheels with those wide tyres are super comfortable over roots and rocks off-road. And it also reminds me of what we both started out as, as cyclists, mountain bikers, cross-country, because at the time, mountain bikes were kind of race-ready, weren't they? They were low at the front end, they only had 1.9 tyres, but on 26-inch wheels, which are very similar indeed, and I think it's very similar to that. Yeah, you know what? I wonder actually whether the whole 650B phenomenon on drop handlebar bikes actually stems from the fact that mountain bikes have gravitated more towards long travel trail bikes that don't really want to be ridden very far, dare I say. And so now, people like us that were on, you know, 26 inch cross country bikes back in the day are now loving these. And I absolutely do love them because Although you can get faster bikes off-road, of course you can, you get a 29 at hardtail and you will absolutely fly, it's not necessarily more fun. This, because it's a little bit harder when you're going properly off-road, you know, you don't go as fast, but it feels faster, it makes it more fun. And then it's the fact that it still feels like your road bike off-road, which adds another dimension of fun to me as well. I think they're great. Yeah, we should probably add that these aren't just for people that are apparently 42 year olds that are reminiscent of a bygone era. It's a lovely moustache as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, what I particularly like was the transition between off-road and on-road and vice versa because you don't feel like you're at a disadvantage either way. When you get there, you're confident that the bike is going to be able to do what you want it to do. Yeah, now there is uh, one burning issue that we haven't addressed yet this video and that is why on earth it is called 650B yeah, in the first yeah. place. Well, yeah, and why in fact are they called 700C wheels? Let's put you out of your misery. In France, many moons ago, total wheel diameter, so rim and tire together, was all important. And there were two key sizes, 650 millimeters and 700 millimeters. The letter on the end then referred to the width of the tire. A being the thinnest tire, C being the widest tire, and B somewhere in the middle. Now, in order to keep that overall wheel diameter the same, you had to have a different rim diameter for each of A, B, or C. C giving the smallest rim, because the tire was widest, and A having the largest rim, because the tire was the thinnest. Now, as you can imagine, producing six different rim sizes for two different wheels was pretty complex and blooming expensive. So in the end, market pressures prevailed and 700C ended up being the most common rim choice with an arbitrary diameter of 622 millimeters. And the same is true of 650B. It has an arbitrary rim diameter of 584 millimeters, but now with these super fat tires on, the overall wheel diameter measures 684 millimeters. Interestingly, or perhaps not, if you truly wanted to ride a 700C wheel, you'd need to run a tyre size of 40 millimetres on that larger rim, because that then adds up to a diameter in total of 700 millimetres. It's for this reason that when you're buying a new tyre, the diameter is shown as 700C, but the width is measured in millimetres, not the common mistake of C, which as we've just seen, 
isn't a measurement of anything at all. Nice, mate. That was good. Well, I personally don't think we should break with tradition, Si. Uh, like the last gravel ride, the epic one, I think we should end it in the pub. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Are you still there? Oh, good. Excellent. 650B wheels, then. I think you can probably tell that we're really rather taken with them. Mm. We are, but inevitably, Si, there is a downside. True. That is that currently there aren't many frame sets out there that will accommodate these 650B wheels with the max volume tyres. Reason being that although you don't need longer fork blades or longer chain stays or longer seat stays, what you do need is extra tyre clearance. The flip side to that though is that when you are next wanting to purchase a bike, you might decide to go for one of these because it is a one bike that does it all. That's right. So you could have your 700C road wheels on for fast road riding on a bike that feels like a fast road bike, but then you stick your 650B wheels in with your fat tyres on for when you want to venture off road. And we really mean venture off-road, as you could probably have guessed. Yeah, that was some gnarly trails today, dude. Oh, yeah. Uh, one question you could inevitably ask yourself now, though, is why don't you just put those max volume wider tyres on the normal 700C wheels? Then, in effect, you'd be creating some kind of drop handle bar 29 and mountain bike, wouldn't you? We all know how fast those things go. That's right. It's a tough question to answer that. I think it kind of comes down to geometry and then also a little bit of philosophy, really. The difference in wheel size would be quite significant, so 680 millimetres-ish for a 650B, and then 720 millimetres for a 29er. And that extra size means they feel a little bit less agile, and the bike also has to be longer, has to be taller. It's going to make it feel more stable, and of course, it will also roll over anything. Hmm. They sound like some great characteristics, don't they? Well... For many people out there, they will be. Others might be slightly less excited about them. Uh, you see, the way that a road bike feels and responds, the way it feels when you corner, the way it feels when you sprint or when you climb, uh, is down to the size of the wheels, but also the angles and numbers which hang off them. These wheels allow you to maintain those, but giving you the extra versatility to venture off-road. Yeah. Are they more versatile? Oh, yeah. Are they more fun? I don't know, mate. I mean, they are super fun, but are they more fun? It's just like different fun, isn't it? It's not in any way the same as riding a super fast aero bike, super fast, but then they are great fun. Yeah, that was a very concise and accurate summary right there. So I think we're going to have to agree to agree right there. <laughs> yeah, uh, make sure you let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Really, really interested to hear your thoughts, actually, on this new trend, this new phenomenon. Are you tempted? Have you got some already? Yeah, we look forward to reading your thoughts. Uh, don't forget to give this video a like, uh, with a thumbs up down below if you've enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed, you can do so right now by clicking on the glow. Then a couple more videos that you might be interested in watching. That's right. Back in the early days, what can a gravel bike do that a road bike can't? That one is just down there. Or... If you want to make every ride epic, irrespective of whether you're off-road and you're on gravel up in the mountains, we've got some great tips just down there.